society needs to find the courage to let people go. You know, people always talk about how ending your life is selfish and cowardly, but people need to learn to be selfless and courageous enough to say, you know what? I don't have the right to hold you hostage to your suffering. Your suffering matters. Your suffering matters so much to me that if you want to die, I will be there by your side every step of the way. As sentient beings, we find ourselves thrown into a world that inflicts immense pain and suffering. So having the option of a graceful exit should be seen as a basic, universal human right. Since our existence is better to never have been, we should all have the right to die. Welcome to the Right to No Longer Exist, a Right to Die podcast, featuring your hosts, Danny, Kevin, and Amanda. In this show, we attempt to change the perception of society's views of voluntary euthanasia and what true autonomy could look like. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Right to No Longer Exist, a Right to Die podcast. I'm joined here with Amanda and Danny. I am Kevin, and we are in episode two. So we're trucking along on our second episode for this podcast. Excited to be here. Um, How are you guys doing? Doing great. Uh, Looking forward to uh, our second podcast finally. I know I knew we had to cancel last week, but yeah, uh, podcast number two. I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm doing good. Happy to be here. Awesome. Yeah, we can't wait to. uh, We're gonna have uh, we have plans to get guests on and stuff, but. we spend hours and hours, the three of us, just chatting about this topic. And then at the end of the two hours, we're like, oh, man, we should have recorded this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we gotta, we're hopefully going to try and uh, replicate something like that in, in actually recording. But, you know, unfortunately, those nerves kick in when you record, right, guys? <laughs> yeah. That they do. That they do. I hate that. It's so, it's so annoying. But although I'm sure Amanda's used to that, so. Uh, yeah <laughs> but uh oh go ahead Sorry. no i was just gonna say I, we have a couple top topics we'd like to bring up and just talk about but mostly i think this conversation was just to have have it flow the way we do off air and we just kind of have these awesome conversations and they just they just flow in their own organic way which is awesome and that's how we usually get our, our best three, our arguments going yeah um yeah, do you have anything there, Amanda? Sorry. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry, Kevin. I just wanted to say before we begin, you know, uh, there was a lot of great response to our first episodes. I just from, wanted to say a personal thank you to everybody that, uh, you know, left comments, thumbs up, uh, watched, and also that made response videos. We got at least like three or four response videos, and that was so, so awesome to see. Um, we can cut this out if you don't think it's appropriate. But I also wanted to thank uh, Claps the Casey for having us on uh we really enjoyed being guests on the show and uh we had a lot of fun so yeah thank you for having us on we cut that out i just thought i just i just remembered it so i thought (laughs) no it's okay (laughs) Okay. no it's very important yes no thank you so much for all for for people's response and we're we're excited to have um you know just people being part of a conversation that i suppose this could be our first point where we kind of talked about this earlier was you know, the, 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 the conversations seem to be only geared towards right to die uh, or a death with dignity that only applies towards old folks or people with cancer or, I mean, a, a six month terminal illness. And yeah. that's great. We have that, right? Like, that's awesome. But it's kind of like you look it up and you see like yearly, there's only a couple hundred people that take advantage of those options. And, um, how what a tiny minute number that is right compared to the tens of hundreds of millions of people that uh want it that aren't 90 with cancer um and that's an important thing to establish i think with us is we're trying to bridge that gap between the arguments and the conversations about you know should that really only apply towards you know terminally ill folks and we definitely say, no, <laughs> it should be available for everybody. And it's, I actually goes as far as it's a basic human right that you're born with. Um, and we should have that as a, something that is monitored just as simple as getting a, you know, 
license or you know applying for a job or whatever just a simple process but it can be monitored safely clearly um but it should apply towards towards basically anybody and you know we can have conversations about that but you know we don't see any difference between a 90 year old with cancer and a 37 year old that's just kind of said hey I'm not enjoying this anymore. I'd please, can I have the ability to check out without really severely harming myself? Cause I don't want to do that. You know, most suicides actually have like, don't, they don't want to be harming themselves in this awful way. It's not like they're they're They have some kind of like self injury, <laughs> mental issues. In fact, that's the conclusion. A lot of people come to is that yeah. these, that they, and this is the insulting part is people can say suicidal people have mental health issues and if you want to jump off a bridge or hang yourself then you clearly are not mentally ca uh, capable of um thinking rationally but we're here to question well is it rational though <laughs> kind of it can seem like it's rational especially you know when if someone's life is is tormented and we would never know only that person would know but Anyway, I'm off on a little tangent here. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> I'll shut up now. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was a little rant. <laughs> no, you're fine. No worries. Uh, you know, that's a really good point because, you know, if somebody has ended their life or wants to end their lives, you know, they're automatically considered unsound of mind. But how do we actually know that when we don't have peaceful and reliable methods? Because, okay, I, you can make an argument that if we have peaceful methods at the ready, if we have euthanasia clinics and still people are trying to hang themselves or do something dangerous, then you can make the argument that, yeah, they might be unsound of mind or have a mental illness. But how would these people react? Yeah, if the, if the rational options were given to them, because, yeah when rationality is taken away from the individual, they tend to do irrational things. So I think that's yeah. very important to get into. I, I just think there's such a strange, there's so many strange notions about what a mentally ill person is and how they think and behave. So like I've made no secret in the past that I, I have bipolar two disorder and I have, I have, bi I have obsessive compulsive disorder. And I've been told all kinds of things. It means that I am devoid of rationality, apparently. It also means that I am incapable of holding a philosophical position. Um, <laughs> and so I just think that there's this notion that if you suffer with a mental illness, it means that you need to just shut up, basically. That whatever your, if your needs as a mentally ill person, for whatever reason, are inconvenient and are uh, difficult for uh, supposedly the well-adjusted <laughs> to deal with, then it's just an expression of, how, of always an expression of just how sick you are, and uh, and it's a it's a it's an expression of psychosis or whatever, and it can't possibly be honored other than a shh, you know, <laughs> or you know, and uh, I think that the real psychotic thing is 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 hearing people's pain. And having absolutely no ability to um, honor that there's nothing in our culture that honors um, the wishes expressed out of out of real pain um, by various individuals. The real psychotic thing is forcing people to live to to demand that they shut up, you know, about the things that they're expressing or the needs that they're they're trying to communicate. Um, this insistence that um, if you suffer from this or that this or that, that uh, you know, every utterance that's a little bit inconvenient or that's a little bit difficult to deal with is something that uh, should be silenced. I mean, that's, there, there's a real, there, there's a real, uh, of course, anti-intellectualism, but there's a real, there's a real nihilism. There's a real, there's real psychotic quality to that kind of response. Um, because I'm, you know, I, I, listen, I, you know, <laughs> I have my inarticulate moments, but I'm perfectly, uh, and I'm not just speaking for myself, there's plenty of other people that uh, suffer far worse than myself with various conditions that are also perfectly um, sane and rational enough to express when they've had enough 
Um, and there's this absolute delusion in this world about um, what getting better is and what treatment provides and um, the insistence that people, the insistence that people go through that um, for an indefinite period of time, endless, endless years of therapy, endless, endless years of trying different treatments. And um, I don't think people have any, I think people that have never been put in that position have any clue what they're asking of others. And it's a, it's a completely um, impositional, um, destructive expectation that people um, work on themselves to try to fix themselves. You know, it's, it's, it's Sisyphusian. It's literally like pushing a boulder up a hill. It's a boulder that will not go up that hill. This fixing of, of, uh, of, of, of these unfixable problems, you know, whether it's a terminal idea or, you know, uh, uh, whatever it is. Um, you got to let people go eventually. You have to let people, there, there's just no other real rational answer other than just eventually, at least at some point, relenting and let people decide for themselves. That's a, that's a great point. Uh, it's like, I mean, to me, you know, it does sound kind of psychotic to force people to continue until the end, even though we were all put on this rock to die and we know what the end game is going to be. So there's no logic or reasoning behind this saying, keep staying, keep fighting, you know, just, yeah. you know, they keep insisting that if you just tough it out a little bit longer, somehow you'll be, you'll reach an eternal state of bliss, which never happens to anybody and it never will. No. And yeah, I mean, you know, same with like the, you know, the motivational speakers and stuff. They, they, they sell you life like it's a Ferrari when it's, you know, more like a Pinto. Yeah. Now, if you know what a Pinto is, you know, it had the, you know, it, it was, it was pr prone to blowing up because the gas tank was on the back side. So, yeah, I mean, the Pinto is going to crash eventually and it's going to be horrible. So. To want to get out early, I think, is a very rational conclusion because, yeah. like, I mean, if you, you look at all the causes of death, none of them are peaceful. None of them are graceful. So, yeah, it's like uh, get out before uh, the building collapses, so to speak. Yeah. There's nothing irrational about that. No, I mean, if, even good point good points guys like like it's so true and it's sad too that people that are struggling with a, a severe illness will beg for you know that a disease a disease to take them out because they don't have an option out and they're yeah. sitting on their deathbed and loved ones are visiting them and holding their hand and it's okay hang in there oh just give them more morphine don't worry about it just let's get them asleep let's get them passed out on whatever drug to get them through the day and not to knock on palliative care at all whatsoever. I mean, it's, no. it's a good thing. Yeah. But like when you're seeing somebody like is begging to, you know, <laughs> for this you peaceful, dignified euthanasia on their deathbed and you can't do it. I mean, how sad and tragic is that? You know, if there was a right, you know, nobody would be doing this unhealthy thinking and wishing these kinds of harms upon themselves where, you, right. you they're saying oh god it's just i certainly wish i could get cancer i just got man i would love to that that brain cancer that you know the most aggressive brain or you know prostate cancer or whatever the most aggressive is like people that are really struggling are actually begging to acquire that <laughs> they, they might even be eating the foods that you know seem to trigger that the most and and you know to just so they have a reason to get out and and you know yeah that's pretty pathetic and sad and we, that's so tad and that's the taboo that we have to get rid of you know everyone this that's the, that's what that's where we're at right now with the whole right to die stuff is it's still a total taboo to talk about it's the taboo to even mention that i want to die or just the mm -hmm. suicide itself the word itself is just like equivalent to just talking about race issues or something now <laughs> you know it's that controversial and it's really sad that there's been no progress whatsoever in the past 30-ish years almost at all 
And uh, I hope we can fix that because it's a big, big, huge, huge, huge problem. Um, and I was also uh, thinking about like how, 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 like if it was a legal, if it was legal, there's a whole, a whole workflow of team members that corners and ETM members and uh, employees and, uh, you know, policemen and, um, that workload, it would just be so less, you know, cause there's no more guessing if it's a suicide and, you know, they can focus on things like homicide or other important mm -hmm. things. The, the whole process would just be because most people that would, uh, utilize the right to die option would clearly make it known to their family that, Hey, this is what I want to do. It's next Tuesday on the 27th or whatever. And please come for my little party I'm having. And it's kind of a beautiful moment, not to mention, that's a side thing, but I mean, there's so many positives to that, even though it's heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, but there's no way to not talk about a heartbreaking topic like this without heartbreak. So, you know, I'm just think, thinking how that would be beneficial to the whole workflow of post death, uh, you know, employees and first responders and the coroners that have to, you know, troubleshoot what happened or whatever. Um, yeah. What do you guys, you guys think anything about that? Well, I mean, yeah, the amount of resources that are, that's, that go, that go into keeping people here, you know, uh, social workers and, and yeah, like you're saying EMT workers and that, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I hate to put it in those kinds of terms, but yeah, it would, it would save a lot of a lot of labor, a lot of human effort, um, not to mention just the, the vast amounts of human suffering that could be prevented um, if, we, if we had access to this. I mean, I think that if, if, if the last 10 years of being involved, you know, in, in, in this community sort of on the sidelines, but, you know, in, in, in the adjoining communities that we're a part of, like the thing that we have in our, to our benefit is like, there are so many people of all walks of life all over the world that are wanting this and are underserved. And um, I think it's a matter of harnessing that energy. You know, I, I've talked to people just so, so many different places in the world that, uh, that want this. And there's just, it's, it seems like our, our deaths are this thing that we are never given the correct like toolbox to, um, to operate with. And I don't, I don't, by that, I don't even mean like methods. I mean, I, I mean, even just words, like people don't know how to talk about this. And that's such an incredible thing that we've been robbed of. Um, and, and the, just the, you know, the guilt and shame around this subject, just, you know, God, if we could just save people from that, that, that hell, you know, alone and uh, being able to, um, you know, being able to, to end their lives by celebrating their lives, essentially, like, like you're talking about, like, you know, I, I, I think that would, isn't that better? Isn't that better than forcing people to like die in a closet somewhere by some horrific means? I mean, um, yeah, death planning should be like that estate kind of planning where you're, yeah planning your will and everybody's rational about it and everyone's sane and yeah. um you're saying this when i die this is what's going to happen and blah 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 but this planning could be when i die all that happens but also i want to plan up until my death too <laughs> yeah i would like to have control of some of that event and happening in the world of my life uh, you know after death honestly you don't even that's what you want you know but you don't know what's going to happen and we know that greedy families you know that that whole thing gets ugly as hell once inheritance comes into play yeah. um so you don't even have control of what you think you have control about a lot of the will stuff but um or if you just don't do a will you know the the bank the, the state takes a lot of your funds out and all that crap but um anyway planning up until death yeah is is zero you're not even allowed to talk about it um you know planning a death at all um why the heck is that i mean why is it once you're dead you're you know it's all up in the air to talk about and be rational and this and that should happen should have happened to bobby and whatever and why can't bobby say hey 
this is what I want before death. <laughs> mm. Yeah, sorry. I might be um, repeating myself, but yeah. No, I, it just, it's just a shame that we can't, we can't like model that in some kind of way for people. You know, and it, it goes back to what I was trying to say about like, we're not given like the toolbox. We don't have the words for it. It's like, people don't even know that that's a possibility, you know? And, and so it, it, it's almost like, you know, people are just stuck with going back to these old ways of thinking about it because there's just, there's just nobody. I don't know if that's an instance where, you know, art or, or narrative, you know, could be a, a, a helping guide for people like, you know, creating stories where somebody is able to sort of plan for their death or have a final party or something, or be able to say goodbye. And I just think if you could find a way of showing people that possibility, it would it would do something to mobilize people, you know, because I think uh, I you know especially after this whole pandemic, I think I think we are at a point where people are kind of thinking about their lives and their deaths in a, li a little bit of a of a more realistic focus because when death is all around you and a pandemic is all around you and you you know it's a little harder to be delusional about what life and, and death is i mean people still manage it but i'm just saying for a lot of people it's a little bit easier to be rational about it and just think of how many people could have been spared just an awful end this these last two years you know if, if they could have planned the end of their life they could it could have made those kinds of arrangements you know and, and people could have gone through with those kinds of arrangements instead of being intubated and, you know all 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 of this stuff you know it's just such, such an incredible opportunity was missed um for so many individuals over these last two years um and so i think this is a very important time to make this argument you know that it just doesn't it just doesn't have to be like this exactly um you know you know with covid you know stuff like that you, we we don't know how many people would have chosen euthanasia over the vent a lot of resources go in forcing people to remain alive when they don't want to yeah. all these social programs all these hundreds of billions of dollars just being pumped into like you know forcing people to remain sentient. And one of the sad things is we don't even live in a world world where people can talk about it openly to their closest friends or their family members without them freaking out. Yeah. And then that might leave you in a place where you don't know where you're at because you can't get feedback. You can't get any kind of emotional support or intellectual stimulation to try to think about things deeper. It's just like, you're wrong. You need help. Uh, yeah. You're the problem. You know, it's like sort of the imposition gets the inquisition. If that makes any sense, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, um, uh, so we got to find a way to get people to talk about it. And, you know, as human animals, we're very emotional. Uh, our nature is to avoid suffering and chase comfort and relief. And losing people or the thought of losing people kind of goes against that. Mm -hmm. But people, society needs to find the courage to let people go. You know, people always talk about how ending your life is selfish and cowardly. But people need to learn to be selfless and courageous enough to say, you know what? I don't have the right to hold you hostage to your suffering. Your suffering matters. Your suffering matters so much to me that if you want to die, I will be there by your side every step of the way. Okay. Oh, dude, that's amazing. A point. Yeah, just, um, absolutely. Just yeah, I mean that's all it really boils down to, right? Is <laughs> is is being selfless, and for the person you know that's not that want looking to die and be there for them um, the whole time, and and, and that would that and you are there for your whole the whole time for your pet, or you're there the whole time for grandma or whatever. But 
for someone that's voluntarily, they, they have to f- figure out how to get past the thinking of involuntarily voluntary. You know, when someone says, I voluntarily want to opt out of life, I don't like it anymore. And I don't even need to give you reasons. I just want out, <laughs> you know, it should be like, okay, shit. I mean, if anybody's saying that and they're serious, how could you not take that seriously and be like, wow, holy crap. Okay. Like if this is what you really want, like, here's the program that is used that we fund and it's awesome. And here's the steps to take. And, you know, it would, it would prevent so much of this tragedy and horror show and collateral damage that happens when people commit suicide, right? Like some people are like a dog in a corner and they're going to bite. And when they kill themselves, they do crazy stuff. They burn their house down, you know, they, whatever it is, they just, there's a lot of other people that actually end up dying in a suicide. You know, they, they burn themselves and they, they run into other people that burn like all, all kinds of chaotic craziness. And that's not to say that like a right to die would prevent all of that ever. Of course, there's going to be like impulse scenarios that are really extreme and someone has a, a vengeance or they're really vindictive and they're trying to make a point, you know, to, they're trying to prove up some point that's different. That's always going to happen. That's part of life. And, but we're talking, we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're talking about the 99% of other people where it's like, I'd love to end on a peaceful note and a loving note and closure and healing. And I'll have all my friends and family around me. Um, but it's like, that's what prohibition is, do- is doing though. These are the consequences is it is creating people to be <coughs> like a dog in a corner and, they end up doing things they don't even like and other people are affected in major ways, sometimes directly. Yeah. And this would all be gone. It's like legalizing marijuana, right? All, all the drug dealers, all the black market stuff, it just disappears in the wind. It's just gone. <laughs> the second legalization would happen. And um, we can have, a, we need to have a podcast about that alone because people think there's a slippery slope and all that, but um. Yeah, we we should we just talk about that on another episode. But it's crazy, yeah, yeah what's happening and 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 the tr- the trauma and of what's happening on on. I mean, think about the math: one million suicides per year happen for how many years? You know, uh, what is it? One hundred and ten billion humans that have ever existed. So, is that what is that? One hundred and eighty million, or uh, I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> bad at math. An insane, a yeah, a lot. That's all that matters. Honestly, one suicide, one person doing something that you that you hear about where they, uh, 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 you don't even want to know the details. Just one of those events should make all of us be like, holy shit, what are we doing here? We, we caused this? <laughs> like, we can't, we can't find a cure to this problem? Like, this is insane. And we do have a cure. We know it. We know it. It's right in front of our faces. But I think what Amanda said earlier is, or both you guys said is how, how do we do this? How do we get this across? And I know we're doing a podcast right now, but there's stories that are really sensational and emotional and like a kind of a a Brittany Maynard story kind of scenario where it does make people stop and think and, and just kind of give it some pause. And um, I don't know how we can do that, but we're trying. (laughs) Yeah, you know, to the Brittany Maynard thing, it's like, uh, it reminded me of that guy who uh, jumped, you know, the, uh, well, this is a different thing, but he jumped um, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge and survived. And the, the news stories always cover people like him who are just so glad to be alive. But the media would never cover the, thousands the millions of people who attempted and are miserable every day because they failed and if we lived in a world where those who wanted to die were validated it's like you can go anytime we you want because we care about you you know that could make their emotional suffering lessen and that could actually reduce uh suicides i mean because you already feel like shit And then the world doesn't validate you. They call you insane. And that's going to make you want to die even more. So it's making the problem worse, not better. I I think some part of the solution has to be 
getting people to understand that an individual is their own possession. Like you're not the possession of your parents. You're not the possession of the state. You're not the possession of someone else's ideology. You're not, you're not, you're not anybody's possession, but your own, especially when it comes to your own self-determination. And it, it has to, it has to, you know, we, all kinds of checks and balances can be put in place. I'm not somebody that's against that. And I don't think any, any of us are the three of us. I don't think any, any three of us, any of us of the three of us are against there being checks and balances to make sure, you know, that it's not just somebody that needs some help that's reasonable and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, people are their own possession and they, 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 none of us are here solely because of, um, of others needing us or having to take some sort of supply from our existence. Um, that might've been why we were put here. We may have been put here because we needed to supply something for somebody else. But at the end of the day, we are, we should be our own possessions and as our own possessions, we should have the right to our own self-determination. I mean, I, it's, a, it, it's a simple statement, but I'm not sure how else to put that. I, and I, I just think that it's still not really ever, it's almost like people never get to grow up. You know, people are always these, these children, you know, essentially that are the possession of their parents, the possession of the school. And then we become the possession of the hospitals and the possession of the, you know, uh, uh, just possession changes hands, but it never gets put into our own hands. And that's something that absolutely should be a human right. And um, it should, it, it should not just be seen as a right that is granted at a certain terminal point of our elderly hoods. It's something that really any of us should be able to uh, command. That's a, uh, I didn't interrupt you, did I? No, 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 not at all. Okay. I think that's very important. Uh, the concept of self ownership, it's like, you know, and also I think people really need to have conversations with themselves on why they want other people to live. Like I made this point many times. And, you know, people may not even be aware of this. I don't think they are, but they're want, wanting others to live for their own emotional stability, for their own psychological needs. And yeah, in a sense that is selfish, but I can understand, but it's still, it's still selfish. It's still like, you know, when they say, you know, live, they're really saying, you know, I need you. But, you know, we can't be used as human heroin or human opium. You know, we got to be, you know, like if we want to break off this relationship with life, we got to, we have every right to break it off, you know, you know, let the life lovers not stalk us anymore. We have the right to enslave us. Yes. That's really what it is, right? We're all, we are being slaves to our own bodies because we're not allowed to do anything about it and it's insane it's torture it's i mean i hate to compare it to slavery but i mean if you're forced into this existence and you don't want to be how is it any different <laughs> i mean uh yeah i totally agree great points um and i had a great point to add on to that but it went out of my brain just disappeared it was awesome you should have seen it <laughs> But you're right. oh, sorry go ahead no good no you please uh, I, lost. I mean we are forced into servitude in our society you know uh, you know if you're suffering every day because you're alive you are basically you basically are a slave to those who want to keep you around and it's like yeah it's um so yeah. a, huh Sorry, buddy. No, you're fine. But as a part of the conversation, people really need to, yeah, like try to understand their own psychology and realize we yeah, why we're being, you know, forced to live, you know, when obviously we didn't choose to be here. It's like 
nobody questions somebody who gets pregnant, for example. It's like, you don't have to provide a reason, you know, you just want to have a baby, you know, no matter what part of the world or what situation you're, you're in. It's like, but if you, but the, uh, lives that were imposed, they're the ones that are put on trial. Yeah. So. It's sad because it should be just as, just, just as hard to apply to have a kid as it should be to apply to, well, not even apply to die now. Cause you can't, you just can't unless you're, you know, terminal or you, you're some millionaire that wants to fly to Switzerland or whatever. And then, you know, what are the tiny, tiny percentages that that happens? And not that I'm, their services are great, but I mean, oh, just how many people have that opportunity and even people that have the funds to be able to go to like Dignitas or Switzerland and they, they still might physically be incapable of traveling that far to acquire that. And they're just like, I can't get on a plane. I have this and that and this and that. And um, so now that now they're forced to endure that type of slavery in their own state by, you know going to a hospital and instead of uh and, and wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars on care for a couple of years um that if we're legal that could have went to some charity or an amazing um situation that could have actually benefited some younger person's life or even people that want to live right like the people that want to die actually would benefit the people that want to live because <laughs> they're not bogging down the resources that the people that want to die or want to live would use. You know what I'm saying? Um, which is important uh, in, like economically. I mean, you know, <laughs> like, Hey, the, the $200,000 I'm going to use to get this cancer treatment for a couple of years that I didn't really want anyway, it could just, uh, it could have gone to you, you guys that uh, want to actually try to make life better and this and that anyway oh it's a yeah. really important point I, I don't you know people get very uncomfortable when it when this stuff is like reduced down to those kinds of economic terms but you know the fact of the matter is it, it's huge huge amount of resources are kept are spent keeping people alive that don't want to be alive and that that well those resources should be diverted to those that do you know there's nothing wrong with people wanting to continue their life journey until they're done you know, um, but th those that want to exit that are, you know, quite literally forced, it is a kind of medical slavery at that point. Um, you know, th yeah, th those resources should be diverted to people that want to continue. And uh, there is only so much to go around. You know, it sucks that that's the truth, but it is. So, um, yeah. Totally. Um, you know, there's no use in wasting all this utility on people who don't want to live. Mm -hmm. So if people, yeah, if everyone had the right to die, we would have more resources for people who want to live. And that's just an economic fact. Of course, you know, I believe the person should always become for, before the dollar, but you know, it's, it's still true that, you know, you know, you're going to have like, hundred over you know hundreds of billions of dollars to put towards something like you know cancer research for example or education mm -hmm. and yeah so i totally i'm in total agreeance agreement with all of you well i don't know you know I, i'm not sure uh how to conclude you know this kind of this conversation i mean obviously there's so much work to do and i'm just glad that we get to be three people in the midst of trying to get that work done um you know I, i'm grateful that we're not alone you know in this uh in this fight to get people to understand um you know this is definitely a a a, a global um effort but it's sort of a global effort that's being conducted you know silently because people are too afraid to really talk about this um and so that's why i think there does need to be sort of some sort of revolution in right to die activism and um you know if we can be a small part of that i'm, I'm very proud um 
because obviously I think some of this, uh, especially given the, 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 the troubled nature of um, our current political times, you know, so much of this has to be done on a grassroots level. And I do think that that energy is there, but we have to find those tools in order to um, develop it. And, uh, you know, I do, I do have some, some positive uh, feelings about where that's headed. I think we made a lot of great points in, uh, in this discussion. And it was a pleasure to be able to talk with you, Amanda, and you, Kevin. You know, thank you so much for being a part of this. And we will have a lot more soon. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your time. And I hope this episode was informative and uh, entertaining. Yeah, sure. That's a good, maybe not the best word, but informative and all that stuff. And I hope, really hope we do um, are doing something, even if it's just a drop in the bucket of making a change towards the right direction, because this topic and subject is one of the most unnoticed and unappreciated and unrespected issues of today. And I hope that we can make a change and a dent in uh, any possible small way that we can and obviously we're hopeful for a bigger dent but whatever it is it is and uh for your support for listening thanks so much and um please let us know how you what you think and how you feel and comment review whatever uh links will be everywhere (laughs) um thanks so much guys i appreciate your time and uh have a good day have a good night take care Bye. 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 (laughs) Until next time. You have been listening to the Right to No Longer Exist, a Right to Die podcast. We hope that you have enjoyed your time and found the information valuable. Please visit us at therighttonolongerexist.com to learn more about our organization and mission statement. You can also follow us on all of the main social media platforms at the Right to No Longer Exist. There, you will find links to our individual channels as well. If you would like to contact us directly, please email info at the right to no longer exist.com. Thank you for your time, and let's remember that during the time that it took to listen to this podcast, dozens, if not hundreds of people endured a horrific death by suicide. Let's fight together for a world where this doesn't happen anymore. See you next time on the Right to No Longer Exist podcast.